Good morning, ladies. Good morning, good morning. I'm so tired, you guys. I'm so tired. Let me read what Jordan said and then I'll tell you why. <laughs> um, okay, something happened this morning. Every morning when I get in my car, I pray. Today I prayed for more faith in a sign. I changed the station once and casting crowns came on. I love them. My mom used to listen to them when we were at our lowest as a family. And then I listened to that station for the rest of my ride. I was so emotional. IDK, if it was a sign or if it was God giving me faith to believe in myself or what, but it gave me all the feels. Here's the thing about signs. When they give you all the feels, it's your sign, you know, a hundred percent. If, if that didn't resonate with you and that didn't immediately like, like that, that song could have just played and you would have just, you know, gone to work and it would have been totally fine. But because you had all the feels and because you um, related it to something in your past and because you related it to when um, Jesus was in your life, you know, when you were at your lowest, that was a hundred percent your sign. That's so exciting. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing. I love it. I love it. Love it. Okay. Um, I'm tired <laughs> because this mama stayed up till 2 a.m. So I challenged my, I challenged my team last night to send me their excuses. I said, send me one excuse that you have. So send me one excuse that you have. And then, um, the, the action that you're going to take to stop having those excuses. Okay. And so my excuse was I'm exhausted. <laughs> My excuse is that Huntley never sleeps. My excuse is that I am always so tired. Yet I used to have this, um, this really good rhythm down where when she went to bed, I just stayed up and worked and I could stay up and work all the way until 2 AM. And I was totally fine. How's that whipped cream going for you? Good. Um, look at you guys, the keto coffee, like pod. I fill it up with whipped cream. I like rinse it out and fill it up with whipped cream. And then it fits like perfectly in her cup. I don't know why that satisfies me so much, but I think it's like the cutest thing ever. Anyways. So I used to be able to stay up till 2 a.m. It was no big deal. Brian would get up with Huntley. Yeah, that's your dip. Can I wipe your hands? Um, Brian would get up with Huntley in the morning and I could sleep a little bit more, which was what happened this morning. He let me sleep in, but it's absolutely impossible to sleep in with this little one um, in a fifth wheel. So, so I'm tired, but it was worth every minute because I signed a distributor and a loyal customer last night before I went to bed. And that was my goal. And the day before that, I did the same thing, a distributor and a loyal customer. So what I wanted to say was, okay, yeah, there, yeah, that's not a dog. That's not a dog. There's so many little girls. Look at, oh my goodness. Taylor, she sees your daughter with her bow on. And for some reason, she's like, dog. I'm like, no, that's not a dog. Did you think those were ears? Okay, so um, I decided that no matter what, I was going to drop my excuses and work my butt off. And okay, go get daddy and stay up. She says, I want more. Um, and stay up and work my butt off and get those things done because I'm going ambassador and my charts are done. I'm, I'm talking with my girls daily on what we need. And I just, I'm working with a different energy, um, than I had before. And so one thing that really stuck out to me on the call, uh, with Pam the other night is Claire said, I'm not doing anything differently. I'm just working with a different energy, like excitement and passion. And she's just excited to work now. And the only thing that changes, I, I was having a conversation actually, wait, before I tell you about that, remind me though. Um, <laughs> I was watching a show last night because I like when I, when I stay up and work, I have to put something on in the background. And so I don't know if you guys are like Grey's Anatomy fans, but if you've ever, I've watched a million Grey's Anatomies, but if you've ever heard of private practice, it's like a spinoff show of Grey's Anatomy obsessed. Okay. So I watch it all the time. I've seen it a million times, but I just like put it on there for background noise. And this crazy thing happened. She's the main character is sitting in her um, in a therapist's office. Okay. And she's like, I'm a doctor. I'm like the best that there is. I, 
you know, have so much to offer all of these things. She's like, I've, I've done everything in my life. Right. So why am I not happy? Why has nothing happened for me that I actually want in my life? Like what, like, how do I change this? How do I change my life? She literally asked that question. How do I change my life? And then it cuts to the therapist and he goes, you make a change. That's it. He goes, you make a change. And then it like went to like something else and somebody started having a baby. I don't know. But it like, I don't know why it shook me to my core because I was like, duh, we make a change. You guys, that's it. So many of us are sitting here wondering or waiting or thinking that something's going to be easier. And I know that I've preached this a lot, but it's like, I feel like we're all just waiting. I feel like we're all just, and not like everybody on this call, I'm just saying in general, in life, we're all just waiting for that next step. And the next step is you making a change. The next step is you taking action. Okay. So that's why I had all my girls last night tell me what's their biggest excuse right now. And what's the action step that they're going to take? Cause I acknowledge that we all have excuses. I acknowledge that we all have things that we need to work through, but then what are we going to do about it? Okay. What are we going to do about it? So I was having a conversation last night and we were talking about how we don't feel motivated all the time. And, um, she asked me, she said, does this happen? Does this happen to anybody else? You think this happens to anybody else? And I was like, girl, it happens to me on a daily basis. Do you know how many times I feel unmotivated in a day? Like I, it's embarrassing to tell you how many times I feel unmotivated in a day. Do you know that there has been times in my life where I've been so tired that I'm like, it's fine. I'll wear the same clothes three days in a row it's fine. I haven't showered. It's fine. I eat crap because I'm just, I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just focused on the wrong things. I'm not focused on my health. This is like, I, I am now, but like my, my point is that there has been times in my life where I haven't been. And there's still times where I go off the wagon. We just ate a Totino's pizza just the other day because it was there. Okay. But like sometimes, sometimes you get in this, um, mind space that you think that you have to be motivated all the time in order to be good at this business. The act, the actual facts of that is that you need to learn how to motivate yourself every single day, because we don't wake up wired to go ambassador. We don't wake up wired to sign a customer. We don't wake up wired to sign a distributor or be our best version of ourselves. We wake up groggy. Sometimes we wake up grumpy. Have you guys ever woke up grumpy? Never. <laughs> Brian said never. Brian is always happy in the morning. And it, that actually makes me grumpy. Does that, like, how are you so happy? How are you so happy in the morning? Give me my coffee. Let me drink my coffee. Then we can talk, okay? Um. I had a dream the other night and it was like a horrific dream. I, I can't tell you what it was about because honestly, I don't remember, but I remember waking up in just sweats and I was just pissed. I'm not even kidding. Like I literally woke up and I'm just like, Wah! like, hi baby. Do you want to come up here? Okay. Um, like I started off my day just mad. I'm, hi everybody. Um, I was just so mad. I woke up. I was going pee. I was mad. I was brushing my teeth. I was mad. And I was like, what is happening? What is happening? And then I knew that it absolutely had nothing to do with this cute baby or Brian. And so I needed to make a change before I walked out of that bathroom. You know what I mean? Cause why come out and just piss everybody else off just because I woke up like that. So I sat there, I made a change. I thought in my head, like, I don't know what kind of dream I just had, Lord, but you can just take this energy. Cause I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't want it. Okay. I, you guys, I talk to God. I talk to God like every 30 seconds of the day, drop a one. If this is you, I once had somebody ask me like, how do you pray? I'm like, I don't know, 24 seven. Like, like, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not like a prayer that just like, okay. And I mean, don't get me wrong. There are times where I'll sit down and actually like dedicate time to prayer. Don't, don't get me wrong about that. Um, especially at night. That's like my, that's like my real dedication of prayer that like everything that I want to pray about that day, but I'm, I'm dead serious. Like I'll think of something and be like, okay, I'm going to pray about that real quick. Somebody texted me yesterday. She asked me to pray for her. Something horrific had happened in her family. And I immediately set my phone down and started to pray. And then, you know, Huntley went to bed and she wasn't sleeping. Like she wasn't falling asleep. And so I prayed about it. And then, you know, I, I was like, okay, I'm going to sign a loyal customer and distributor. God, can you bring me the people that really need this business? I prayed about it. 
Like there's no right or wrong way for you guys to talk to God as long as you're talking to him. So I used to have a problem. <laughs> Stephanie says, I thought I was weird. No, I think that keeps us closer to him. I think that keeps us closer to him. I think that keeps him in the forefront of our minds constantly. I know that if I were to like judge and because we all do it right. The second that I judge or like say something that I probably shouldn't have because, because I'm so like, God is just in that forefront of my mind immediately. I'm like, Oh, should have said that. <laughs> Sorry. Shouldn't have said that. Like, I know you're watching every move. Like I really shouldn't have said that. Like I'm embarrassed right now, you know, because I think that that's, that's when we, we truly have that good relationship with him. He forgives us. He knows that we're human. He knows that we judge and we mess up and he knows that we try our best every single day. And that's all we can do, right? That's all we can do. And so I think if you are constantly praying to him, I just think that that brings you closer. So I don't remember what my point of with this was. Oh, is that, um, I feel like a lot of the times we think that we have to have a reason to pray. Um, I, I used to be like this. I used to, I've, I've, I've told you guys this before, I think, but I used to feel like, you know, you have so many other problems, <laughs> like so many other people to take care of. Like, you do not need to hear my problems. I got, I got this. Like, I got my problems. You just take care of all your others. Like, I still love you. And I know you're there for me, but like, I can take care of my own problems. When in reality, <laughs> it wasn't going so well for me, you know, like I was not able to take care of my own problems and I was not, um, giving them to him because I'm not supposed to carry them. And it's not my burden. And I had to learn about that. And so a lot of the times I would feel like if I didn't have a true reason, like, like my brother going to prison, right. He's facing prison. I'm like, okay, this one's too big. Like Huntley, on, Huntley not sleeping. Like I can handle it. God, I don't need to pray about that. Like I can just handle that. But like my brother going to prison, like I'm on my knees all day, every day praying because there's nothing I can do about it. Right. I was deciding what was what was for him and what was too big for me and what was not too big for me and what was too small for him to want to look at. You know what I mean? And I think that's so crazy that I did that because in reality, like God wants to know us wholeheartedly. He wants to take every single burden that we have. He wants to help with our children not sleeping. He wants to help with them being healthy. He wants to help with all of these things, but we have to ask and we have to pray. And I think that's the first step as a lot of people just think, well, yeah, like I'll start that someday. And it's like, just start now, just start talking. If you talk to your husband and you talk to your kids and you talk to yourself, that's really what praying is. You're talking to yourself, but you're talking to God, right? That's what praying is. Don't be afraid to talk to him. He's just, he's, he, don't, he's there. He's there listening. So don't make it a thing. Don't make it a big deal. Don't act like you don't know what you're doing because I'm telling you neither does anybody else. We're just, we're just winging it. We're just winging it. Okay. It's the 22nd. This one is called leap unapologetically. It's the self-reliant entrepreneur. Let's see if I can get through this without like stumbling over my words. <laughs> okay. If you lend me your ears, I shall doubtless. Yep. Already did it. If you lend me your ears, I shall doubtless take your hearts too that I may not lead you in any wrong. Let me warn you of this. Never violate the scaredness of your individual self-respect. Be true to your own mind and conscience, your heart and your soul. Theodore Parker, 1865. Figuring out what it means to be true to your own mind is merely the halfway point. The real work involves holding it and finding a way to make it so. However, if the conditions that feed your heart and soul don't exist, perhaps you'll need to make them. Some people will tell you that you can't do that. Take delight in that and leap, up and leap unapologetically into the hard work at hand. Yes, it's hard work. But wouldn't you rather work hard doing something that brings you hope? Wouldn't you be more okay with failing at something that nourished your soul? In a poet's advice to students, E.E. E. Cummings wrote, to be nobody but yourself in a world which is doing its best night and day to make you, uh, to make you everybody else means to fight the hardest battle which any human being can fight and never stop fighting. The challenge question is, what's one thing you will never violate, never stop fighting for in your search of the perfect entrepreneurial journey? Okay. So this question is asking about your entrepreneurial journey. What's the one thing you will never violate 
or never stop fighting for in search of your perfect entrepreneurial dream. For me, I think that I will never stop fighting for freedom, freedom of time, freedom of finances, freedom of everything, freedom. I think that's what we work for every single day, right? Is freedom. You know, I'm the perfect example of this. I used to, <laughs> okay. I used to love my job and what I did, but I didn't like the people that I worked for. Does that make sense? So like, I absolutely loved what I did. I was good at it. I, um, I, I loved it. I loved the schedule. I loved the, um, position that I was in all of those things. And even before that, I loved, um, I was an IT specialist before that from like 18 to 21, you guys, I had like this bomb job. I was literally an IT specialist. Like it was one of my favorite jobs ever. But again, um, it wasn't for me. I, I didn't, I didn't love the people that I worked for. I was actually sexually harassed at that job. It was the craziest thing in the world and then fired because, um, I told somebody about it. So, huh? Oh, here you go. So here's what's crazy. I feel like you can love what you do and you can even love who you work with. You can love what you do and love who you work for. But at the end of the day, you don't work for yourself. At the end of the day, you don't wake up when you want to wake up. At the end of the day, you don't get to take a break and play with your kids at any time. Your socks. Okay. Take those to daddy. Um, at the end of the day, you're still going to work for a certain amount of dollars. There's no bargaining with that. There's no saying like, Hey, I've been here five years. Like, can I get a raise? Like, can I get it? Yeah, sure. 50 cents. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I've been there. Like I've literally been there. I think my biggest raise was a dollar raise, a dollar raise. Okay. My biggest raise in this business. Are you guys ready for this? It was over $10,000 in one month. $10,000 in one month. So my biggest raise at a corporate job was $1. And I worked harder there than I do now. How does that work? How does that work? Right. And it wasn't like I worked harder for them than I do for myself. Don't get me wrong. When I say that, what I'm saying is it's a different kind of work. I have passion behind it. And here's the thing. I actually had passion for them too. Um, when I first started, I absolutely loved who they were. When I first started, I thought that they were great people. I thought that they truly valued others. I thought that what we were doing was, was good. We were selling, we were selling camera systems. It's like the, I wasn't, I was a manager there. Um, but the company sold camera systems to like new seasons markets and like, you know, Walmarts and like what, like huge commercial buildings we would sell like these camera systems to. And I always thought like, like the owner literally had passion behind it. He felt like he was helping people, everything. But what I quickly started to realize was that they were in business 100% for themselves, 100% for themselves and that they didn't give any breaks to anybody. And I'm not saying that you couldn't give breaks. I don't want to get into this long story, but my point is just that I didn't feel that they were very genuine. And I didn't feel that they truthfully were running their business with, eth with, with ethics, ethics. They weren't doing it ethically. Okay. Um, I was really getting into my faith then I had just started this business, right? So I was really getting back into my faith and I quickly found out that they didn't believe in God. And I don't know what that did for me. I think that just made me feel a little bit alienated and not in a bad way, but just as in, we always talked all the time. We were a very small office. There was only four of us in there. It was all men and myself. And we always were just always talking. And I just always loved to share what I was learning and they didn't want to hear what I was learning and they didn't want to hear about Jesus. And it was very obvious and they were very blunt about that. And it made me feel very uncomfortable because that's who I am. And if I'm not, if I'm not able to talk about, you know, if they're able to talk about drama and this and that and all this crap, and I'm not able to talk about Jesus, then like, I don't really want to be there. You know what I mean? So anyways, what I'm saying is, um, freedom for this business. I don't care what you do. If you do not have true freedom. If you cannot look at your husband and say, you know what? Screw work today. We're going to the beach. Let's go. Then you're not living free, true freedom. 
So what are you working for? This comes back to this question that um, somebody had last night about motivation. Guys, <laughs> right now, like I am so unmotivated, it's not even funny, which sounds really bad to say out loud because I'm going ambassador, right? And I'm, I'm like stoked and I'm signing and I'm like doing all the things that I need to do. But at the same time, I'm dealing with a lot of crap, a lot of crap. Okay. Not only am I still dealing with my mother, which I had to make a therapist appointment for never done that in my life, in my adult life. Okay. But I was like, you know what? Working on my best self. How can I be ambassador if I can't talk to somebody about this? Right. That's embarrassing to admit. I don't know why I'm embarrassed about it, but there you go. I just said it out loud. So if anybody was needing to go to a therapist, Rochelle goes to one. So no, but seriously, I just feel like if I can't talk, if I can't talk about it to Brian because he doesn't understand and that's not his, that's not his like role. He's there to be here for me. Right. But like, he's not there to like, give me this advice on what I should or shouldn't do. And I need somebody to do that for me. And so, um, yesterday was a day of appointments for me. I was spending so much time creating appointments and I was unmotivated to do that. Okay. I haven't, um, nothing's been normal with me, like at all, nothing in my body has been normal with me since I had my miscarriage, um, on Thanksgiving. Okay. So I've been putting off an appointment because I'm just scared, period. I'm just scared. I don't know what they're going to find. I don't know if it's going to be totally fine. I don't know if I have an infection. I don't know what it is, but all I know is nothing's been normal. And I'm dealing with that. I'm dealing with that every day. I'm dealing with exhaustion, like straight up exhaustion. I'm dealing with being nauseous all the time. I'm dealing with, and no, I'm not pregnant. Trust me. It's not possible. But, um, so I'm just, I'm just dealing with certain things. I'm dealing with, um, bloating, like a ton of bloating. And so I'm telling you guys this because I want you to understand that I don't just wake up every day and I'm like, I'm the best and I'm going ambassador and I'm a signing machine. And I do, I wake up and I say those things in my head, but I don't feel it. I don't feel it. A lot of the times I do not feel it. And there are days where I just sit on that couch and I'm like, Brian, I just need to get outside because if I could just see the sun, then maybe like I would feel motivated, but I do not feel motivated right now. You know what I'm saying? Also, I mean, we're in like a 39 foot space. So like <laughs> there's that. Right. And I keep thinking like, Oh, by the way, we did not find out about the house yet. We'll find out on Thursday. Cause I know I'm going to have lots of people asking me, we haven't found out yet. It, it was a holiday on Monday and I didn't remember that. And so we're going to find out either Wednesday or Thursday. What's today? Wednesday. So probably tomorrow at some point. But anyways, we're dealing with that stress. We're dealing with getting tickets to go back home. We're dealing with moving across the country. Like we have so many things going on. You guys, I am not motivated every day, but here's the reality. And, and for me, no, I don't have another job. Okay. So I'm going to give you my side of it. And then I'm going to give you your side of it. If you do have another job. So my side of this is that I will never go back to another job period ever. Brian will never go back to work. Not an option unless he wants to don't get me wrong. He's probably rolling his eyes. Like <laughs> Brian can go back to work if he wants to, but I'm saying you bet your ass, excuse my French. He will never have to go back to work. Therefore I have to be motivated. It's a job. And personally, I look at it every single day as I have to get up, show up. I may not have to wear makeup. I may not have to wash my hair and I can wear three day old clothes. Okay. I don't have to be motivated to Brian laughing. Like <laughs> I don't have to be motivated to do all the things at once. As long as I am doing the things that I know that are going to bring us an income. Okay. Because everybody's got to go to work every day. I just personally get the option of doing it from my bed or from my couch or from my camp chair outside or by the pool, like whatever. But like, so if you're not motivated because of that, if you're sitting here saying in your head right now, well, yeah, like if this is all I had to do, I'd be motivated every day. Number one, I promise you, you won't because it gets repetitive. Okay. And, it, and, and as amazing as it is, it's still work. It's still work and you, and you will never master this business until you master your mind in knowing that you will continuously always have to be motivating yourself. Okay. So what that might look like for you, if you have a job, I'm taking it back to when I was working over 60 hours a week. And when I was, um, 
going to school full time. Okay. Full time. I was taking 18 credits at the same time as working 60 hours a week for a job that I absolutely did not like the people that I worked at. Right. So what a day looked like for me, I had to leave my house at 4 45 AM to get to work at 6 AM. Okay. 4 45 AM to get the work, to get to work at 6 AM. And then I worked there all the way, usually until around four. Most of the time I didn't get out of there until five. When I left, I had an hour and a half, maybe two hour drive home in traffic. Okay. I wasn't, I was leaving my house at 4 45 AM. I was getting home at like seven or eight o'clock. I, I cannot make this up. So already right now, if you guys don't have a job that contains that, then you have zero excuses why you're not working your business. Okay. Because in that time, I think I went to the bathroom 20 times a day. No joke. Oh, I'm drinking so much water. Sorry. <laughs> Going into the bathroom. Okay. Five minutes in there. I'm following. I'm responding to messages. I'm putting up a post done the next hour. Go into the bathroom. I'm following. I'm putting up a post. I'm doing whatever. Like I'm doing things when I can on my lunch break. I had headphones in. I was listening to, um, self-development. Okay. And I was messaging. That was my time to get my messages out. When I got home, I ate dinner. I did my homework and I stayed up as late as I possibly could because I knew that I had to get up and go, go to work the next day. So for me, like if I, I getting up earlier was not an option for me. I like I was getting, I was leaving my house at 4:45. So getting up earlier was not for me, but I knew that if I could stretch it and push it to like 10 PM, maybe 11 PM that I stayed up, that I had to get up and I had to go to work. Right. So if you have that feeling now of you have to get up and you have to go to work to your job, have that same exact feeling when you are doing the work for it works. You, it's your second job. Think of it that way. You cannot miss out. You cannot, you cannot call in again. You cannot, they're not going to pay you if you don't keep showing up. You know what I'm saying? And so you have to show up. I feel you. I worked an hour away, leaving around 530 and getting home at one. AM. Oh my gosh. What is that? Like three hours to sleep, four hours to sleep. Yikes. Yeah. You totally got me beat. Um, but look, she's still showing up. That's nuts. That's nuts. Um, Missy, you're my hero. But my point is that it doesn't matter how you're doing it. It just matters that you're doing it. And when you do the work and you get that momentum going, um, we, we all said it on the call the other night. It's when you start, when you start working, when you start the action, like the actual action, everyday action. When you have the everyday action, that's when momentum starts. And when momentum starts, that's when you don't want to stop even at your weakest moments because you're excited, because you just signed somebody, because you got more to sign, because you have more boxes to fill, because you want to help more people lose weight. You get excited. So it doesn't matter how tired you are. It's a different kind of work. It's a different kind of energy, right? But that momentum will not start it will not start until you start the action. That's it. You just have to take the action. Okay. I've been like talking to you guys for so long. Let me, um, let me read the devotional. I forgot to bookmark mine yesterday. Okay. This one's called sufficient grace. I see you, baby. I see you. I'm almost done. Um, and he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly. Therefore, I will rather, I will rather boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses with insults, with distress, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. Second Corinthians 12, nine anxiety is considered by most to be a weakness, but if we are weak, praise God, that weakness simply provides an opportunity for God to act on our behalf. When we go to our father and admit our weakness, when we hand our anxiety to him, he takes over. He fills us with his strength and he acts in our best interest. We don't have to be strong enough. He is more than capable of handling any problem, any fear we face. When we're afraid, we can let go of those fears. Take a deep breath and watch him act. Dear Father, I know when I am weak, you show off your power. Thank you for taking over my fears. Amen. I love this so much because it's so true. 
the second that you like give up the second that you truly feel like I'm like, I, I have nothing left in me, like whatever you're going through, like I have nothing left in me, God. Like I, like I prayed about this for so long, nothing's happening. Like I, I just don't have it in me. That second that you literally let it go. Cause you're like, I can't do it anymore. I'm done. Like it is what it is. It's in your hands. That's when he acts because he's waiting. He's waiting for you to truly hand it over to him because you're still like, you're still like praying about it. And then you're holding onto this rope so tightly like, okay, okay, God, can you take this? And then you're like holding onto it so tightly still. And then when you finally get so weak that you can't hold onto it anymore, you're just like, you know what? Just take it. It's fine. That's when he acts because we have to actually give it up. We have to truly give it up, let it go, give it to him so that he can do those things. If we don't do that, then there's nothing for him to work with. We have to trust before he can give us that action. Um, Stephanie said, everyone should listen to Transformation Church new series. My glitch is my gift was amazing. The series is called Stronger. Okay, I'm gonna take a picture of that because I wanna listen to it. Um, thanks, Steph. I didn't know they made a new one. Oh, that's awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. Um, Okay. So I'm, I'm just so excited. I don't know why I'm just so excited. I was so tired when I woke up and then I did this and now I'm feeling super refreshed and excited. We had so many people on today. Um, 